In this video, I want to talk you through how much it can cost to set up a low-tech mushroom farm. Hey there and welcome to this video. So there's a lot of change happening at the farm um, at the moment. We're trying to increase a lot of our production capacity and we're making um, lots of changes. So there's a lot going on at the farm. But in amongst all of that, I realized that um, some of you might be interested to find out how much it actually costs to set up a low tech mushroom farming um, small farm. And you can do it on a different, different number of ways. And in this video, I want to cover four of those different ways and what kind of costs are associated with that. So stay tuned. Right, so how much does a low tech mushroom farm cost? And let me add at this point that I'll be looking at the setup costs, but also later on in the video, I'll look into the typical running costs of a setup. But before we dive in, if you like these informational videos, please hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any new videos. Right, so I'll be looking at four different scales of low-tech mushroom farming setups, and they'll range from five kilograms a week for hobby growers, for friends, to 10 to 20 kilograms a week, then 80 kilograms a week, which is a semi-commercial scale, and then finally I'll look at 1,400 kilograms of mushrooms as an output per week. And for those of you thinking in pounds, you need to multiply that by 2.2, which I'll do when we get to them respectively. So what I'll cover is um, what a possible setup could look like and what are the costs associated with setting it up in that way. And then I'd like, like I mentioned, um, for one of these cases, I'll be going into a lot more detail as in terms of what the operating costs are. And obviously the levels will be different, but the types of inputs, the processes and the outputs are similar across the different scales. So first up then, there's the hobbies scale. Five kilograms a week, that's about 11 US pounds. And what's the cost of a setup like this? Well, you'll be looking at spending anywhere between $100 to $1,000. And you can keep it really simple, and it does work like that, as you can see on your screen right now. That's just footage, time-lapse footage, in a plastic container filled with a bit of poor light to keep a humid environment, and it does work. Other examples you could think of is a four-tier greenhouse, or a very small hydroponics tent, both of which are readily available and you can modify um, them to grow mushrooms into. And of course, don't forget that you can also grow outside in a mushroom bed or you can have a dedicated area simply done with shade netting, for instance. And in this way, you can feed your friends or your family, have a lot of fun growing mushrooms in a very easy, simple and not very expensive way. So once the mushroom bug has bitten and we hear this a lot from people that they really get into it want to grow more what you can consider is growing on a small scale what I mean by that is around 10 to 20 kilograms per week which is um, between 22 pounds and 44 pounds or so and a typical cost up uh, cost of a setup like this is anywhere between two thousand and five thousand dollars it's normally done in a space that you already have so within reason most spaces can be converted so if you have a garage a barn or a basement chances are that you can use this to grow mushrooms in one very easy way in this kind of scenario would be to grow in a hydroponics tent and you can see that here we've set one up it's a really simple way to create an isolated really easy easy to control separate environment from the room you build it in so it's got some great advantages in that you can create this humid environment it's got existing portholes so you can pump fresh air into it take co2 laden air out of it so it's a really simple way to create a lovely fruiting room where you are so the next scale I wanted to touch on is the semi-commercial scale, and this is the one that I'll dive into a lot more detail on later on in this video. It's um, 80 kilograms a week or so, which is about, a, it's nearly 180 pounds per week. And this is the level that we could produce at our urban farm in Exeter, which is what you saw on the first slide, the picture there, the fruiting room. And there's also one on your screen here, so it was a really good fruiting room. It was about 20 odd square meters and it fruited oyster mushrooms beautifully well. And it's a really, really great strain to grow oyster mushrooms. It fetches a good price, but it's also really consistent and easy to grow. Um, so this is a range that we'll be looking, like I said, looking at this um, later on. We're also currently trying to set our farm up to reach this kind of output again. And in terms of costs, what you'd be thinking of with a system like this is in the region of $20,000. And I'll provide, like I said, I'll provide you with a bit more detail and a breakdown 
of the setup but also the running costs later on. One of the reasons I decided to make this video is that we also featured as a case study in a book by Richard Perkins. He's got a new book called Regenerative Agriculture and if you haven't heard of Richard do look him up. He runs an amazing permaculture project called Ridgedale in Sweden and he's got a multitude of income streams there um, ranging from microgreens to uh, mushrooms to pasture poultry and eggs. Um, and it's really, really great stuff that he's doing. But he's also, he does a lot of educating and this book is a great example of that. So what he's all about is aspire, helping aspiring food growers to get going and that is absolutely great. So this book is really great on the detail as well. So most mushroom books I've seen are very sparse in detail in terms of how much a setup costs. It tells you all about growing techniques and how you can set up a space, but not in terms of how much it would actually cost to set it up. And this book is really into uh, the next level of detail, really. It covers things like no-dig market gardening, microgreens, agroforestry, and way more. And as we helped put the mushroom case together for the book, I thought I'd share it with you later on in this video. So then it's on to commercial scale farming. And for a commercial scale farm, you'd be looking at spending north of $100,000 for a proper setup. I'd like to add we haven't spent that on our farm here yet, although the willingness for that seems to be getting there. So somebody who has spent at least $100,000 on their farm is Brian Callow over at What the Fungus in Canada. Um, he spent this on a farm with multiple grow rooms. You can see one in the image here um, that was provided by a friend of ours, Tony at Fresh Cap Mushrooms. He visited the farm and um, did a great case study on it. Um, the Grow rooms are basically car shelter tents converted into fruiting rooms. So he's got five on the go at the moment, I think, and produces about 400 pounds or 200 kilograms per week. And he supplies that to about 45 restaurants seasonally. This farm isn't as low tech as we like to advise people to set up. And what that often leads to is a bottleneck in the sense that sterilization takes a lot of time energy and physical labor to process the huge number of spawn and fruiting blocks. But like I said, he supplies 45 restaurants seasonally. That's really great because it's all local food and he's based in a popular tourist area. So I'm sure that they appreciate all of these locally freshly produced mushrooms. You don't need to grow at that scale. Of course, you can grow much, much bigger. Um, next scale I want to look at is a commercial scale of 1400 kilograms per week. This is a little over 3,000 pounds per week, and that's quite a substantial output. These numbers are not quite as random as you might suspect. What they're based on is a working example from a new partner of ours who's helped set up hundreds of these farms around the world. And you can see one in action on your screen right now. Um, we're hoping together that we can help many more people to set up on a commercial scale and that that will make a difference in the supply of local food. This is at the, what's at the base of the commercial scale that I'm talking through here. So the big difference between us and many other growers is the use of low-tech cultivation techniques. And this is the same for these commercial farms that we're aiming to set up. So our partner used to set up farms with hugely expensive equipment like huge pressure cookers and autoclaves and now advocates a different, simpler technique, much like the direction we've taken for many years now. So if you want to find out more about this kind of setup, please fill out the form below this video to take the next steps. A farm like this has a setup cost of around $100,000 and needs time input from four to five people. And it has multiple grow rooms, output of around $100,000 per month, and it can be housed on a small footprint of about 5,000 square feet. Those numbers look really great for a space that's only about 15 by 30 meters. These are only a guideline, of course, and I'm not saying that you'll have your investment back within a month because the payment payback period depends a lot on the costs and those depend on where you're based, of course, but it does give you something to go on. The costs will include things like rent, how much you pay yourself and how much you pay your team. I think it is fair to say that these numbers do challenge a notion that a lot of people have, and that is that it's really difficult to make money growing food. Now, like I said, let's have a look at the semi-commercial scale in some more detail. So you can see here how the setup costs coincide with the three main stages in mushroom cultivation. There's a separate video for you if you want to check that out. 
Richard based the cost of these structures for these stages on three work cabins that were stripped and repurposed for the mushroom farm. So with these structures, what I mean, we call them porter cabins. You see them in abundance on work sites. These should cost you in the region of nine to ten thousand dollars. And then for the, third, the first stage, you would need to add hardware, as you can see on the slide there. So you would need a fridge, workbenches, substrate mixer and scale. The first stage, by the way, is the utility mixing and inoculation, of course. And all of this, it might require an IBC as well, but this would likely come to the tune of about $4,000. Then on to the second stage, the incubation stage, you would need items such as a hanging rails, heating, cooling... Uh, to control the environment and then a temperature controller to make sure that it actually happens. So obviously the cost here depends on your location but it should be in the region of $1,500. And then for the final stage, the fruiting stage, you would need a completely different setup uh, again, set of hardware. Things like hanging rails, a humidifier, fans, ducting and filters as well as light and these will likely add up to around $3,000 or so. So then, in total, to put a number on a setup like this, it's looking in the region of $20,000. And that, of course, excludes any time that you would put into setting this up or anybody you pay to set it up for you. So on to the actual process and the running costs then. This process is beautifully simple in the sense that mushrooms do most of the work, but you do need to give them the right conditions and certain inputs as well. So key inputs are your time, spawn, energy and some other materials such as chopped straw, lime and potentially some pelletized material too. So all told, excluding your own time with this kind of setup, it should work out that you have a production cost of around $3 per kilogram, uh, which works out to be about $1.25 per pound of mushrooms. Your main running costs to make sure that the whole process of mixing, incubation and fruiting runs, they will be electricity, water and some consumables like cleaning products. And of course, in terms of outputs, it's mushrooms. But with a setup like this, it doesn't need to be constrained, confined just to mushrooms. You could also add grow kits, for instance, or other extras. You could think of microgreens, which are easy to bolt onto a setup like this. Or you can obviously go into um, teaching people through workshops or simply a farm tour. Chances are that people in your local area have never visited a mushroom farm and that they would be very keen to do so. To assess the viability of a farm set up like this for you, that would be a job for you to do. It depends a lot on the prices of mushrooms where you live, the cost of spawn of course, and these vary widely. I hear prices in California of $16 per pound, in New Zealand and Australia that's even higher, but also the cost of spawn is higher. I do hope that this provides you a good framework though to start working it out for you. So I think that's it for now in terms of setup costs and running costs. If you do enjoy this information, please subscribe to the channel and thank you very much for watching.